Wolf Bride, Chapter 6, Full Moon Rising. Stand frozen, still hidden in the trees, as Sergei's shot echoes in the air. Howling in rage and pain from the silver bullet that struck his shoulder, Jet takes off running into the woods. Are you crazy, Sergei? You disobeyed a direct order. I had a clear shot. I took it. Now there's a badly wounded primal loose out there before the day before the full moon. So, full moons, werewolves, dangerous no matter what. You think he's just gonna forget you shot him? What if he goes after other humans in revenge? You step out from behind the trees and Sergei jumps in surprise. The hell is she doing here? Morgan doesn't turn to face you, and you're not sure if it's because she's blind or because she sensed you there all along, as tuned in to your presence as uh, you are to hers. Selene isn't the problem here, Sergei. The problem is you broke protocol and put everyone in danger. Morgan, how could you let this happen? Sergei could have killed him. And now, he could go off and kill someone else in retaliation. If you had held me, you'd be dead now, and the problem would be over. That's murder. We're trying to study werewolves, not kill them. The guy crosses his arms in front of his chest. Yeah, yeah, sorry, boss. He doesn't sound repentant in the least. So, uh, what do we do now? Just go, both of you. Go to town. Make sure we're prepared for tomorrow. Sergey and Hugo exchange a look, shrug, and begin to trudge back towards civilization. Morgan sighs deeply, holstering her weapon and running a hand down her face. Sorry, Celine. Sergey doesn't always know when to quit. Morgan, we have to fix this. Morgan stares blankly into the woods for a long moment. I'm not sure there's much we can do. I know werewolves are vulnerable to silver, but it won't kill Jet, right? Her face is grim. <sighs> We're studying that. From what I've seen, they heal supernaturally fast from that wound, or any wound. You're right. I've seen it for myself. But it's not the same for silver. He can still heal, but at a more human face. And when they all go primal during a full moon, like tomorrow, Silver's the only thing that even slows them down. Her voice is or more urgent. Celine, I know they haven't hurt you so far, but you have to get away before the full moon rises. That's when they completely lose control. Morgan touches her shoulder, as if to underscore her point. But at her touch, the heat flares between you. Though the immediate danger is past, your heart still pounds. Somehow you know Morgan is also remembering last night's dream. You recall tangled limbs, whispered words, and um, for a moment, you forget Jet entirely. I knew you'd come looking for me today. At least I'd hoped. Last night... Um, it was incredible. I don't even have words for it. We didn't do much besides cuddle last I checked. So, you remember? Her hands run down your arms, fingers twining tentatively in yours. I have lucid dreams all the time, but never quite like that. It was a new one for me as well. She ducks her head, a little abashed. I knew it wasn't exactly real. I, I would never... I just mean... There are no inhibitions in dreams, no thoughts, no rationality. Just our innermost feelings. Um, I mean... Morgan. It was just a dream. All sorts of crazy stuff happens in dreams. We shouldn't make anything more of it. Right, of course. She clears her throat. We should find somewhere safer to talk. My research station isn't far from here. Morgan leads you through the woods to a tent-like structure where the two of you have a seat. I guess I'll snuggle closer. You take her hand, moving so that your thigh brushes hers. She smiles and folds her hand between the both of hers. Celine, I thought I'd learned so much about the back. After what happened with Jet today, I guess there's a lot I still don't understand. I've been studying them for a long time. Maybe I can help you fill in the missing pieces. 
Tell me about the full moon. I guess maybe we'll go through all of them, I guess. What happens during the full moon? Bastine said that's when their connection to the primal magic is strongest. They turn into vicious animals. They can't talk, can't reason. They tear through the woods, killing whatever they find, acting on instinct alone. It's why we call them monsters, Celine. You can't help but shudder, picturing the violence you've already seen. Now, unrestrained. Whatever humanity you think you've seen in them, whatever admirable qualities you think Bastine has, they'll all be gone when the beast takes over. Your research. You told me that you're working on a cure? Yes, that's why I need to learn everything. How werewolf physiology works, the source of their strength, that's how that's linked to the phases of the moon. Why they take humans as mates. With all that, I... We'll find a cure and stop them once and for all. Why the werewolves uh, you take never return. Bastien told me you've taken members of the pack before as family, and none of them ever come back. She takes, uh, she seems to have taken aback, and you feel her sudden wariness through the bond you seem to share with her. Uh, just like the one you also have with Bastien. My studies are still not complete. She turns away from you and doesn't elaborate further. Wow, okay, we're just gonna let that rest. Primal magic. I've seen things with the pack. Things that I don't think science would be able to explain. The way they restore a polluted area back to health. Almost as though they're healing the land. Do you know anything about that? I have observed some still unquantifiably phenomenon like that. But that's exactly why my studies are so important. There is an explanation, and I'm going to find it. A scuffling in the bushes reminds you why you were uh, looking for Morgan in the first place. Oh, wait. You crouch down and click your tongue. <sniffs> Thunderhoof, it's okay. You can come out now. Thunderhoof sticks his nose out sniffing, then scampers over to Morgan and butts his head against her legs. <sniffs> What's this? It's a deer. I found him in the woods. He's an orphan, and he needs a place, safe place to live. Some place that isn't a den of werewolves. I was hoping you would look after him. Of course I'd be happy to. A thunder hoof, is it? Uh, you'd better be careful on him. He's so little. Hey, don't talk to me about me like I'm a baby. I'm not scared of any dumb werewolf. Let me at him. Thunderhoof prances around, kicking his thin back legs and imaginary foes. Take that and that. Mm, sure, tough guy. Maybe let's wait until uh, you're, you know, next year when you've gotten some antlers, okay? She reaches a hand down to pet him and Thunderhoof nips at her fingers. You certainly got spirit. Don't worry, Thunderhoof. There are no werewolves here. Not yet, at least. Thank you. Mm, that'll give me an excuse to visit you. You never need an excuse. She finds your hand and presses a kiss to the inside of your wrist, sending a shiver of pleasure straight through you. My day is always better when you're in it. Morgan checks her watch. A wounded primal loose right before the full moon makes me uneasy. I need to get back to town to make sure he doesn't come hunting us. The pack will probably be looking for me soon, too. No, Celine, did you not hear anything I said? It's almost the full moon. The last place you should be is with the pack. I don't need you to protect me. I can take care of myself. You ever hear the phrase discretion is a better part of valor? I'm pretty sure it applies to staying out of the way of rampaging werewolves. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Morgan hesitates and then sighs expression, guarded yet hopeful. When can I see you again? Pixelberry doesn't doesn't think about what they say. About them. I'm not sure. You've always seemed to find me when I'm in some kind of trouble. And now you know where to look if you ever need me. You arrive back at the den to find Layla tending the Jet's wounds. Bastien oversees, his arms crossed. You feel a powerful anger ruling from him and within him, a dangerous foreboding which nevertheless draws you to him. He looks up, sensing you before the others, and there's a dark violence in his eyes that dissipates as he sees you. 
Good. You're back. Ugh, watch it. Oh, sure. Yell at the person trying to help you. That'll end well. The wounded jet's shoulder looks nasty and hasn't healed in the least. But based on his loud complaining, he'll live. Is Jet okay? That looks bad. Everyone watches as you go to Bastion's side. Jet jumps to his feet, trailing unfinished bloody bandages. Hey! Her. She was with them. He rushes you with such fury, you take an unconscious step towards Bastion for protection. He closes his arm around you, blocking you from Jet. What do you mean? I saw her with the hunters. Bastine, she is one of them. He growls at you, more animal than human. She is the enemy. Bastine looks at you warily, but his voice is soft. Is this true, Celine? I was there. I saw what happened. Yeah, you also forget that we, you know, found the little deer, or you told me to go to her, you know? But I wasn't with the hunters. I saw them in the woods and was trying to figure out what they were doing. I... Tried to stop Sergey. Morgan tried to stop him too, but he didn't listen. Jet crosses his arms and scowls. Huh. Fat load of good it did. At least she tried, asshole. I'm sorry, I couldn't do more. It's not your fault, Selene. This cannot stand. The only goal of the Knights of Osiris is to wipe us from the earth. And they'll be free to strip the land for their own gain. We must destroy them before they destroy us. Bastine looks at you, one eyebrow raised, if it's asking for your opinion. Bastine... It isn't like that. Morgan is trying to help. Both you and Morgan are trying to protect nature. You're just going about it in different ways. Yes, we're doing it the right way. Bastine... Morgan isn't trying to hurt the pack. It was one of the others who shot Jet, after Morgan told him not to. They will never stop at nothing to kill us. Even orders from hurt their own don't steady their hand. Bastine stands stock still for a long moment, and then you can feel the weight of the responsibility heavy on his shoulders. He comes to a decision, and his eyes flash first to you, then to Jet and the pack as voice is commanding. Jet is right. We no longer can allow SCP or the Knights of Osiri on these lands. Steen addresses you in a quiet aside. I'm sorry. I trust you mean well. But this attack only proves that SCP is stepping up its hunt for us, and I must protect the pact. Whatever experiments Morgan claims to do, they are no doubt worse than a clean death. He's not wrong. Members of the pack nod their heads, grumbling and angry gearing up for a fight. Bastine puts a brotherly hand on Jet's shoulder, all animosity from his challenge evidently gone in the face of a larger threat. Jet, what have you found that can aid us? I would like to hear more of it. Jet paces as he talks. When the hunters came after me, I was investigating a toxic spill upstream. I couldn't tell who was responsible. Humans, no doubt. We have to investigate and purify the spill before it works its way downstream. Agreed. Take Isabel and Callum with you. Jad and Bastine lock eyes. Jet gives a throat-bearing nod that you're starting to recognize a submission to Bastine's authority. As the others talk amongst themselves, Bastine takes your elbow and turns you away from the pack, speaking so only you can hear. You should accompany them. Help with the spill. Me? Why? I don't think I'll be much use, at least not compared to a werewolf. I must protect the pack from the other, any other incursions. The Knights of Osiri are becoming brazen. I do not trust Jet to restrain himself should he run in any humans. Your presence might prevent more violence. And it will go a long way to dispel any suspicion that you are working with the Hunters. Diamond Choice. Investigate the toxic spill. I'll do my best. Thank you. You set out with Jet, Callum, and Isabella when the sun is low in the sky. Jet keeps glancing back at you warily, but so far has left you alone. Uh, which stream is it? There it is, up ahead! 
Wow. Disgusting. You approach the stream to find the formerly clear water polluted with the muddy rainbow and oil slick leaking barrels leaves no question as to where the waste came from. Oh no. How do we clean this up? Sometimes I hate being a human. Your guilt serves no purpose but self-pity. Put your emotions to good use instead. What? Okay, you need to calm your shit. I'm trying. We need to discover who would bring this waste all the way out here, and why. Jet, Callum, spread out. See what you can find. The three of them head in different directions, analyzing their surroundings. Guess I'll do the same. Hmm... The riverbank. Stepping carefully around the toxic slicks, you follow the path up the riverbank. I'm not sure what you're hoping to find. Your sharp eyes pierce through the glowing dark and her growing darkness easily. There must be something. Oh, what's this? The tire tracks. All the way out here. What have you found? Jet comes up behind you, followed by Callum and Isabel. There are definitely um, from a truck tire. See how why they are? Jet and Callum both crouch to investigate. Callum touches them up while Jet sniffs the air. Hmm, they're fresh. And then the last day, the sun hasn't hardened them. You drift away from the others. Looking for friendly wildlife, soon you realize a hawk is watching you warily from a high branch. Hello there. Humans! Humans bring poison! She. Oops, well. <laughs> it's a hawk. Spreads her wings angrily, sharp beak opening in a threat. Yes, uh, but I'm not bad. I'm trying to fix this. Who are the bad humans? Have you seen them? We'll just switch this up. Her laser sharp eyes, boring to you, judging your truthfulness. After darkness, then, then they come. Stop them! She screeches and takes off with a powerful flap of wings and then rustles your hair. Thank you. We will. You rejoin the others on the riverbank, frowning at the damage in front of you. I have a feeling they've been uh, coming here every night, which means they'll probably be back soon. We must discover who is responsible. Then we hide and wait. At his curtain on, Isabel and Callum each go wordlessly in a different direction, while Jet takes up a position near the largest mound of refuse. Uh, you know what? I will try and make amends with Jet. I'll try. There aren't many places to hide, so you crouch beside Jet, who doesn't even acknowledge your presence. It looks like you're in for a very long and very quiet night. So, Jet, how is your wound? Jet makes a face that's half disgust, half pain. The bandage still oozes blood. Your friend is a terrible shot. He is not my friend. Jet snorts in derision. I don't expect us to start braiding each other's hair, Jet, but I'm on your side. At least when it comes to this. You gesture at the stinking, oozing horror show of a stream behind you. Don't shut me out of helping. Fine. For this. Your conversation is cut short as you suddenly hear the unmistakable rumble of a diesel engine. You watch from your hiding spot. The undescript truck backs up to the stream. The engine cuts off and two shifty-looking men jump out. Hey, come on. Don't make me do all the lifting this time. Ah, uh, fine. Ready? Three, two. We're unloading more... Or they're unloading more barrels. We can't let them keep dumping them. Beside you, Jet erupts into his primal form. Oh, for the love of... What did Bastien say? He jumps out of hiding, teeth and claws bared. The men stumble and fall, dropping the waste barrel as the three whirlwinds emerge from hiding and converge on them. Ah! Oh, what in the hell? Enough! You will pay. 
with your lives. Wait, you can use them. You stay out of sight, speaking low, so only the werewolf's sharp ears will hear you. Let them escape. Scare them, but let them live. So the message to SCP that you won't allow this to go on. Death is the message. Isabella gives you a wary side eye. Then her ears go back. Gaze flicking in silent communication to the other two. What? What in the hell were those things? They, they, listen, uh, if we were to X-Files this, this is the uh, repercussions of your poisoning the land. The werewolves advance menacingly on the two men who scramble backwards until... Let's get out of here! The two men fall over each other, trying to get into their trucks. The werewolves loom menacingly. Amazingly, they hold back from attacking. Leave. Do not return. Jet snaps his jaw at the driver, who slams a door and guns the engine. Ah! ah. Soon the truck is in the distance, leaking barrels are still rolling around in the truck bed. You did it. Isabel shoots you an unreadable look that seems slightly less menacing than earlier, did it? Jet tilts back his shaggy head and howls. All three of them shift back to their human forms, but seem to be waiting for something. We ran off uh, the guys who were dumping, so shouldn't we start trying to clean up? We will. In a moment, a grizzled but delicate gray wolf bounds gracefully towards you, shifting into Naomi as she nears. Ah, I smell no blood in the air. Were you able to complete your task? Yes, we... This one kept the polluters from death they sorely deserved. Hush, Jet, I know I taught you better. These men were Dutch servants of SCP, complicit in but not responsible for this damage. Emmy looks at you kindly, touching your arm. It is not wrong to show mercy. We must now cleanse this site as we did mine. Will you help as before? Happily. Good. Rarely have I seen Wolfkin with so deep connection to the primal magic. The four of you gather in the last of the darkness around a pile of stones, flowers, and herbs. The speaker strikes a match, igniting the dried leaves, which let out a trail of fragrant smoke. Stone and soil, fire and air, this water which is life is tainted. We must renew its purpose. We must begin anew. Power flows up from within you, out of your breath, and as you watch the black poison tainting the stream, slowly, slowly dissipating. Well, imagine if this was actually doable. <sighs> One day, right? Fortunately, nature just doesn't work as quick as that. You've been seeing it a second time. It is no less powerful. I still can't believe you did that. We could not have done it without you. She pats your cheek fondly. You, my dear, belong here more than you know. Later, back at the den, Bastine finds you alone in your room. Selena, I'm afraid you cannot stay here tonight. You must return to your uncle. Wait, what? What happened to lifetime uh, commitments? It is a full moon tomorrow. He says it without any special emphasis. You can feel both his reverence and our apprehension at the thought. So what Morgan told me is true? A muscle in his jaw tightens at the name. If she told you all werewolves go primal, that much is correct. The full moon is a time for running wild. We... We cannot speak, nor even understand speech. I've seen something happen during the first hunt. I meant to tell you about it. I think the primal magic worked on me somehow. I can understand animals now. Truly. That is incredible. So, you not being able to talk shouldn't be a problem. He shakes his head. It's not a matter of language or understanding. Even among our own kind, full moon nights are intense. No one is safe around us who is not a full part of the pack. Oh. 
basically there's a lot of wolf pouncing around. You and the other wolf, Ganna, must stay away from us tomorrow. He grimaces, and you can feel how it pains him to say it. I cannot risk you being near me while the full moon is out. I could never forgive myself if you came to harm. I seen. I'm never safe around you. You're always in danger. Or I'm always in danger when you're near. You meet a smoldering gaze and you feel his desire grow, echo your own, deep and powerful. Celine, you must know I would never willingly hurt you in any way you did not like. He lingers as though unwilling to part with you, yet he touches your cheek with a trembling finger as it feels like fireworks against your skin. Bastine, I know this is what we must do, what every wolf can has always done, but I don't want to see you leave. You must swear to come back. I cannot bear the thought you would might be gone forever. We've talked about this. I know you want me to commit. He pulls you roughingly to, into his arms. His voice is husky, low, full of longing. No, this isn't time to think of such things. It is a time for wildness, for impulse, for pleasure. I cannot plan beyond tomorrow night, but I beg you, let me give you a reason to return to me. Give Bastine a special romantic goodbye before the full moon. Invite him to stay. No, I don't think I will. Oh, for a moment, you feel the heat of his desire light your body, but you can also feel the wildness in him. Closer to the surface now as you draw near moonrise. Not now. Not like this. If I'm with you, I want to be with you. Not the... Not the moon working its way on me. With visible effort, he turns away. Be safe, Bastine. I will find you at your uncle's house when the moon is set. It's only the afternoon, but the whole world away. When you head into town with Layla, she links her arms with yours as you walk down Main Street. This is gonna be so much fun. We'll have a girl's night, dinner dancing. Um, you're in a surprisingly good mood. Why shouldn't I be? Um, it's just that we kinda got uh, exiled from your home while your partner turns into a wild animal for the night. Ah, uh, see what you did there. Oh, that makes no matter. Or make no mistake. I love pack life, but the full moon is a vacation. I dress up, eat at a fancy restaurant, and go dancing all night. She pats her belly meaningfully. Of course, right now, I've been falling asleep by like eight, but I can at least do the restaurant part. Oh, and this is my favorite boutique. You mean the only boutique in town? Hey, Unspeak is tiny and you gotta get your kicks where you can. The two of you step inside, Layla scans the racks with an expert eye while you follow along. For a small town, this place has some killer selection. Oh, and you definitely have to try this one. Oh, and here I thought you were shopping for just yourself. Not eight months pregnant, I'm not. Besides, you've been living in the woods and sleeping in a cave. Treat yourself. I mean, some women plan. They're like, you know what? I'm going back to my prior weight. Some of them achieve it. Some of them, some of them don't. She winks at you and speaks in a sing-song voice. And who knows who we might run into while we're out. Uh, it's not like Bastion's going to be there. You made it clear that I won't see him until the moon is down. It's not against the law to flirt a little. Oh, for the love of Christ. Yes. If you happen to be in a relationship, like Layla is, oh, I'm gonna go flirt. Or is it just me and your super prego friend who can't fit into her favorite clothes anymore? Buy this skirt and a blouse for a girl's night out with her to live it up and attract some special attention. Paint the town. Oh, boy. All right. All right. I can't say no to a little dressing up or down. Yes. Now, don't you feel awesome? Like you could just, I don't know, kill a man with your bare hands. You laugh, admiring yourself in the mirror. I'm not sure this is a skirt for that, but it does feel amazing. Maybe I've spent too much time around the pack. Next stop, food. Mama needs some lunch. 
Layla takes her out to her favorite diner. Literally the only diner in town, let's be honest. Where she shamelessly orders one of literally everything. Um, wow. I'm actually impressed that if you finish, or manage to finish half of that, when you get a chance to eat food not cooked over fire, you take advantage, honey. Not really. It's better when it's cooked on an open flame, just saying. Plates fill the entire table. She gives you a sly look in between bites of each dish. So, sleep with Bastine yet? <laughs> None of your concern, thank you very much. You choke on your salad. Excuse me? The slyness drops away, and she sips some water before looking at you earnestly. Okay, okay, maybe not my business, but for real, I've never seen him act this way before. Honestly, I used to find him kind of scary. He can be intimidating, sure, but scary? He was always just so intent on his duty at the pack, I never could have pictured him falling in love. But you think he is now? She gives you a slow smile. I don't know. I'm not bonding to him, but he sure is different since you came to town. Tell me about Bastine. Mm. Were me and Re Isabel really together? The way she acts around him. Like she owns him. I don't actually know, to be honest. I don't want to know. And anyway, whatever the history is, it's gonna stay history. How can you be so sure? Um, have you seen him? He can hardly take his eyes away from you. I think I even saw the man smile two whole days in a row. That's never happened before. Well, that's good to know. Oh my god, you are totally blushing. What? Am not. You eat in silence for a while, taking in all that Layla has told you, which isn't really much. Finally, she lays down her fork, her teasing attitude turns serious. But for real, how are you doing? A joke, but this must have been a hell of a week for you. I mean, you thought you were going on vacation and now you're part of a werewolf pack. Um, it's a lot. I'm still trying to adjust it at all, I, I guess. And she doesn't mean the salad. Look, I don't mean to force you and Bastien together. You're allowed to feel however you want. I just want the two of you to be happy. Whatever that means. Mm. I don't know how I feel. Like, I feel like I just been spat out by a tornado and I still don't know which way is up. I can imagine. Well, now is a good time to take stock of your things. Sort out your feelings without Mr. McBroody breathing down your neck. Thanks, Layla. It's nice to have someone to talk to about this. Hey, what are girls' nights even for? Dinner, drinks, and wild night of dancing away our problems? You got it. You finish your meal and head out together. Hey, I gotta stop in my apartment and rest a bit before our big night out, but I'll meet you at the bar later, okay? Alright, be ready for a party of your life. I mean, technically she's pregnant, so she really can't have drinks. I always am. As you part ways, you find yourself staring at the distant green edge of the woods, a strange sensation echoing through you. Though you're now a long way from Bastion as the sun sets, you start to feel him change. The energy surges through your bond, a raw, animalistic, magnetic, irresistible. Before you realize what you're doing, your feet take you to the edges of the trees. Bastion, I know you're close. What do you think you're doing here? Oh, for the love of Christ. Is it a Bastine nut? Nope, not gonna say. Isabel stands just beyond the tree line. You meet her eyes. The moon's about to... You look up together as the last rays of sun dip below the horizon. It's pretty. You're frozen, in place, watching Isabel's body lengthen to an inhuman height, furring teeth erupting, her eyes glowing, fierce and murderous. Yeah, we've seen it all before. No. Oh no, whatever we will do. The moon is high, primarily as a bit have you in her sights. Well, the pickerins, why are you on your own, or are you? Maybe Bambi will come save me, I don't know. 
Without further ado, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down to the description below. Links to social media, Discord, if you like supporting me and my content. Without further ado, once again, thank you all for uh, tuning in. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. It means a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, hey, hopefully you all have a great weekend. And yeah, 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 I'm catching up on this crap. It's the VIP crap, so, you know, it's it's not really top priority, as we've been covering about a dozen plus new games, as you've been seeing as some of the uploads have been going up, as well as um, if you guys have been uh, tuning into our Twitch at all, uh, long story short, been covering a lot of gameage over there as well, and uh, hey, a lot of really good games you should consider checking out, or, uh, well, eventually they'll head over here to YouTube, so, once again, thanks for tuning in, much love, and I'll catch y'all later. Peace out.